Hello YouTube, this is going to be a review video, um, well sort of, of my Zongshen HQ electric scooter. Uh, so I bought this scooter uh, to fix it up as a winter project and uh, get it going again and then uh, ride it and probably sell it. And yeah, I needed uh, a lot of work for electric scooters, but uh, yeah, here we're going to go through it. And uh, so, just uh, to note, I've only taken it around the block. I haven't taken it for a full test ride yet. So, when I bought it, it obviously, like most cheap Chinese electric scooters, fallen over a few times. Plastics have got some cracks. Some of them I've epoxied. Some of them just left. Um, the screen had hazed up to the point where you couldn't see through it. So, I broke it off so you could see everything not a lot of kilometers actually 253 kilometers but like most of them there's a reason for that and of course cracked mirror in the fall uh, and general overall impression of it is it's uh okay when it's put together plastics are a bit creaky and uh once you take it apart you could see the welds they're uh, not exactly the best and everything is mediocre enough to just get you going. Brake lever is also broken there, as you can see from that fall. At least at least two falls in its life. Um, it's a pretty fully equipped scooter. Um, I'll explain the features of it shortly. Size-wise, it's supposed to be like an electric competitor to a Honda Cub. Is what it's marketed at. A Cub 70, like from the 1970s and 80s. Um, but it's a bit smaller in size than an actual Cub. It's about the size of an older Yamaha Vino or a uh, Honda Gornio or the uh, newer Aprilia uh, SR50 Motards. So it's not a, like a full, full-size large scooter, but it is for an electric. It's a lot bigger than a lot of the electric scooter bikes. You can see around, this is uh, 72 volts and 500 watt motor and uh yeah we'll talk about that shortly but um yeah as far as being a competitor well, i don't know so much but as far as being a qual more quality electric scooter i would put it uh above the geo brand electric scooters for chinese scooters and uh, this msrp for like 2400 dollars when it was new in 2014 um yeah so it's got a full set of features for a electric scooter full lights brake lights uh license plate light even though there's no plates it's considered bicycle even in canada blinkers um go over the control panel here it's a bit confusing left side is like a standard scooter sort of you have your blinkers and then push in to shut off your horn your key switch, that position is on, that's off, and if you push and turn, and you turn the handle to the left, it's going to lock like any scooter. Here's where it gets confusing. This is your light switch. So in this position, all the way to the right, when the key's on, everything is off. In the middle position, your uh, gauge lights are going to come on, all the other lights off. In the left position, your headlights on, your, your uh, rear lights on, and if you want to get a high beams, you turn your high beam on, or you could do a flash of a high beam, which is normally where a starter would go. And I think that's actually a starter emblem, but that's your flash or high beams. Um, the reason I got this cheap and need to fix it is because of very cheap design in the front. They don't have a very good splash guard. As you can see here, the splash guard comes up from the bottom, stops right there, right in front of the controller and you get water in it. You get water, snow on that, and it melts, and it gets inside. Poof, goodbye controller, shorts out. So uh, I needed a controller. Not too expensive on Amazon now, about $65, but it did take three weeks to get here from China, which they lied to me about. They told me it was prime, and uh, it wasn't. But whatever, that's a different story anyways. But uh, yeah, I got that controller. Then the batteries in here, they're uh, heavy, like 20 pounds a piece. There's two batteries in there and four batteries in the bottom to make your 72 volts. 
In total, the scooter weighs close to 300 pounds. Just the scooter without you on it. So it's very heavy for what it is. But the batteries are low in the center. So it's well rounded out enough. You can tell when you're going uh, over bumps and stuff and around corner. Um, yeah, so as far as range on this, it actually does go up to 40 kilometers an hour, at least on the gauge. So judging by the fact that the batteries are 20 amp hour batteries, and I put a, uh, a shunt and a meter in line just for a test without the cover, without the plastic covers on to see who's going around the block, how much the motor's drawing, and it's drawing about 26 amps and it's at full throttle. So 26 amps divided by your amp hours gives you about 7, uh, 0.77. So you're getting at full throttle 32 kilometers range maximum out of all your batteries if they're all in perfect condition. But taking consideration they're lead acid batteries, you don't want to drain them more than 60% or so at a time. So at full throttle, you're going to have 19.2 hour range. Assuming you don't have brake lights, turn signals, anything else, you turn those on and you're pulling another 2-3 amps. So running lights. So if you're running with your lights on and using your turn signals and everything, you should be getting around 18, maybe 17 kilometers range total for something that's this heavy and this big. Not very good, but depending on how cheap you get one, it might be worth it for you. Uh, I'm going to show you now with the key. Oh, charger also. Charger's pretty simple. Plug it in. You got a green light there, red light there. They're both turn red when you're charging and green when it's fully charged. From about 60% capacity to fully charge takes about 7 hours to charge and 120 volts. So, yeah, it takes its time. So, uh, oh, also let me show you. So, to make this legal in Canada for uh, not needing registrations. You've got the pedals. Pedals and a chain. This chain comes with the master link detached and the little uh, clip to slide in. And you pull the chain over the sprocket legally to make this thing legal. As far as functionality, it's never going to work. But you could actually just, just pull it over and put that on by hand. And then you got your pedals, which are folded. Push them down, open them up. Everything looks like it's going to work, right? You put them on the stubs that are here, and what do you know, either way you go, you hit the plastic, and it doesn't work. But, again, those are just to make this bike street legal. Uh, you could take it, technically, unless there's a restriction, you could take it on bicycle paths. And, um, yeah, in addition to bike, bicycle paths, you could take it on the road, and like a normal bike. Now, to close this, you need to force it down. Or else it won't really close. And uh, yeah, let's turn on the lights for you. So, right now, lights off, turned on. Now you see we have our power went up, so turn off. So, we're fully charged. Lights. And uh, let me shut off the lights in here. So, yeah, it's actually pretty bright. See, no headlight on right now or anything. And now, put headlight on. Pretty bright. Rear light on as well. And high beam. Pretty bright. Headlight with the flashing for your high. And also, even when it's off, you could still flash somebody. Um, yeah. And now brakes. Brake lights. And you have your license plate light. Even though there's no plate. Blinkers. Left. It's a fancy option, you actually got a horn. Right? And off. So that's the uh, static review of this scooter. Unfortunately, if you put this stand, kickstand all the way up, the center stand or the kickstand, the rear wheel will not go up like most gas scooters, so you cannot rev it with the wheel turning while it's in place. You need to actually ride it. And even though it's middle of December, they actually cleared the roads finally. 
and I plan on taking it out for a ride hopefully tomorrow get some range on it and see how it does if it fails I'm gonna need to push it home it's gonna take me all day so that's why I planned it for a Sunday and uh, see how that works but uh, yeah in general if you find one that's cheap enough and uh, you want to give your kid or teenager something to ride where it's not going to be too far away to go less than six seven kilometers in each direction it is doable to do but uh yeah you try doing anything more than that you try going uphill probably oh boy this thing's gonna be pushing it it's uh for what it is it's heavy and a bit underpowered but you got a lot of torque so you could get up to 25 30 kilometers an hour no problem as long as you're on level ground or a little bit of a hill but as soon as you probably get on a hill or you need any any bit of range this is not the scooter for you but as far as being an electric scooter okay quality it's a bit better quality than those cheaper ones i usually find around with 36 volts and such anyways if you want to make more youtube videos just let me know